What's going on folks, Eddie here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's been a while since I've made a video. Six months because of our favorite COVID thing, and then a couple months because I needed just to take care of life. But I have reason to make videos again. So I didn't want to do another summer without a Roadster. And the problem with having a car that is down while you're doing major things is you don't get to drive it. And this is shaping up to be a glorious summer and I haven't had anything to do. This is my 1992 Mazda Miata. It's basically stock, but a couple things have been done. I put wheels and tires on it almost immediately after buying it because mountains. That and it has a 1.8 liter from the 94 and up models. I didn't do that, the previous owner did that. This is one of those times when you buy someone else's project. Now while having the 1.8 in there is better, it's a bigger engine, at least it's better in my opinion, it's not perfect. First thing I had to do when I picked it up was I had to change the valve cover gasket. It was leaking. And so was the cam angle sensor O-ring. And because it was leaking, oil was dripping out of it and going onto the heater core hoses. So one of those was bulging badly and spraying a bit of coolant around. And there's more leaks still. So the front main seal is definitely leaking. And the rear main seal might be leaking as well. Those aren't a terribly difficult fix, but there's a few other things that would need to be dealt with on this car. So it might have the 1.8 engine, but it's still got the 1.6 transmission, clutch, drive shaft, differential. Oh, and the differential is leaking at the passenger axle. I think this car might need a little bit of help. Now, all that said, it actually doesn't drive bad. It's got a little bit of timing belt whine, but that's to be expected. It does have a bit more robust timing belt. I think it's on there a little tight, but I can deal with that. That's not a huge deal. Now, when you compare this to the 124, it feels very similar. I've driven an old 124 and I've driven an old Miata and I've driven a new 124. And as much as I think I'd like the old 124 to be the one that's similar, this is closer. This feels a lot like a worn in 124 would I imagine. Maybe that's the worn out bushings or the massive lack of power comparatively, but it's really not that bad. Now one thing that's definitely a lot more worn in than the 124 is the paint. So the paint in this thing is definitely the paint of a car from 1992. It's also been painted at some point. There's two different shades of black on this thing. But that's something that's not that difficult to deal with. It actually looks pretty good now. But that's because I went and saw a good friend of mine named Ben. My friend Ben is phenomenal with paint. Ben and I used to work together about 15 or 16 years ago at Rocky Mountain Bicycles. Ben was the paint guy, and essentially I was his prep guy. Ben's a very good painter, very good at making something shiny. So I brought this thing to Ben to see what he could do with it. First thing Ben did was tape off the Miata. Anywhere we didn't want polish to get to, we had to make sure it was covered. The trunk's particularly dirty, so we decided to take the rack off and polish underneath the rack. Next up, Ben washed the car thoroughly to make sure it's completely clean. Then the two of us clay barred the car. Clay bars remove any imperfections that are left on the surface after washing. The car has been washed and clay barred, so now what Ben's gonna do is he's going to do a little bit of wet sanding on areas that particularly need a lot of touch up. After that's done, we'll move into the polishing part. It's gonna be so shiny when it's done. All right, let's let the man do his thing. Before applying any polish, Ben first sands the surface to get rid of any of the bigger imperfections. This includes deeper scratches and some of the larger, heavier swirls that are in the surface. Okay, that's 
okay. Next, Ben applies the first stage of polish. This is a three-stage kit from 3M. Ben carefully moves along the surface with an orbital at about a medium speed. Once the first layer is done, Ben wipes off the excess polish. Yeah, this is all single stage, just paint job. What was that? It's all single stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. After demonstrating what was going to happen to the entire car, Ben went to work to finish the whole thing. With each stage of the polish, the car got shinier and shinier and shinier. Thanks, Ben. This thing looks awesome. Once Ben was done, he pulled off the tape and gave it a quick wash. And then lastly, I put the rack back on. Ben did a really good job. The car looks a million times better. And I think we don't need to worry about the way this thing looks for a little while. Now this next modification is pretty pointless, but I knew I was gonna do it the moment I got this car. It's pretty simple to install, very easy to reverse, and yeah, completely worth it as far as I'm concerned. Here's how you install it. This mod is from MX5 Tech. It comes with a Bluetooth module, a wiring harness, and some zip ties. First, disconnect your battery. Then find the connectors for your headlight motors. This mod only works on an NA Mia. Connect the wiring harness to both motors, running the cable along the front of the engine bay. I ran mine just along with some other wires up in front of the radiator. Now insert the zip ties into the MX-5 Tech module and zip tie it off to the driver's side of the engine bay. Once the module is in place, go ahead and zip tie off any excess cable. Then just reconnect your battery and close the hood. And what did that mod get you? A blinking Miata. I know you want one, so I'll leave a link in the description down below.